Sales Tax Committee in a knowledgeable and meaningful role. The reason I uh, volunteered for this is because I've done it before. In uh, a previous city that I lived in, in 1998, we passed a local option sales tax supported by the chamber for the purpose of diversifying the revenue for the city. And the chamber got behind it and uh, pushed hard and said it was passed. And it was 60% for property tax relief and 40% for capital improvements. And then about three years went by and nobody's property taxes went down. And uh, <clears throat> so the chamber formed a task force, a three-person task force that I was a part of. We went in to look at the financial records and try to study why we didn't get property tax relief as defined by some people. And the bottom line is that the proceeds just went into the general fund. Uh, the mayor's answer was property taxes didn't go up as much as they would have if they hadn't had the revenue. And uh, so it hit the paper and the mayor got mad at us for causing problems. But um, there was not the kind of structure set up as you have here to have the accountability for those funds. And I think it hurt the credibility of the council at least for the short term. So. with governmental auditing. I was the audit partner in governmental practice for five years in Eastern Iowa, and so I understand governmental finance. And, and I think we have to meet with the management and make sure they understood how the financial information is going to capture the proceeds, uh, what kind of an audit trail was going to be established, what kind of reporting mechanisms, what kind of criteria would be set up to, to help us make our decisions and uh, involve them with council. How can uh, the members of the law community provide value to the city council? I think you touched on that a little bit. So I think by providing credibility that proceeds would be used according to the ballot issue uh, for future possible referendums. Uh, <coughs> if this revenue source were desired to be used in that. Okay, uh, you've already given examples of previous committees where we've done this. Um, any other questions, Justin? I got one that uh, would kind of go back to your experience of working as an auditor. See, I've had a, I've had a chance to see you work on uh, a couple other projects that you helped the city with. Number one, the golf uh, thing, and then the vision, setting the vision for uh, Cedar Rapids. So uh, I've had a chance to see you and in action and I have a great deal of respect for you so I'll ask you this question that probably wouldn't ask maybe no one else other than you and also because you work too for McLabry and they recently have done an audit for the city and when you listen to public comments at times you hear that <coughs> citizens say I don't trust you I don't trust you city council Yet on each one of these McLabry audits, they should be set up where if someone did anything illegally or just morally wrong, it should be rise to some occasion where an auditor would catch it, I would think. And every time we go through that, we, we have a clean bill of health, so to speak. So uh, I don't know if people get confused over what maybe the uh, the Board of Supervisors did over their pay issues or whatever it may be uh, when they originally said I won't take a raise and, and then they did and all of that kind of stuff. City Council has never done anything like that. I don't know if anybody on this council has done anything that would rise to any level of suspicions of any illegality towards any funds or anything else. Sorry for the long way around this question, but how would, how would this commission, is there a way that an auditor would pick that kind of stuff up, or this commission would pick that kind of stuff up if someone was doing something illegal? I guess it maybe goes back to, is the audit that we just went through, is it the right type of audit to pick up these kind of things? I really, really bothers me that the, Number one assumption right away when we talk about finances is that you're a bunch of thieves. And I don't know of anyone that would never ever say that about any of these people. So you got to comment on that. 
Yeah, I would first say that you got to start with the assumption mm -hmm. that 30% of the people will hold that opinion irrespective of what you do, or some percentage. So <clears throat> you have to accept that uh, as a part of public service, I believe. Number two, a financial statement audit as done by a public accounting firm, CPA firm, primary purpose is expressing opinion on the financial statement presenta presentation as a whole in all material respects. This type of activity is way below the testing <coughs> threshold of that. So there's a lot of things that could be done that would consider to be untrustworthy, uh, but would never be caught in a CPA financial statement audit because it just doesn't get to that level of scrutiny or you, you, you couldn't afford the cost. So that process should not be expected to. And so thirdly, I think, this process, as I would see it, would get into a rather specific look at the use of those sales tax proceeds. And I think one of the things you'd have to do, the committee would have to do with the concurrence with the council, is establish criteria on each of these expenditures and what's, what type of documentation you're going to have, what kind of reporting mechanism you're going to have that would be available and by inspection for others who, who would make it very clear that there was no question on how the proceeds would be every once in a while. I just love to ask a question that Brian would have asked. You know, one he knew the answer to, Steve. And there you go. You answered the way I thought you would answer. It's much more of a uh, overhead audit. And I don't want to do things but it's for units. And, you know, it's very, very expensive to do each and every penny that's spent. Have someone do that, and we used to do it and found out it was really a waste of money because we were not thieves, or anything. and we just did one periodically. Then that nobody knew about it, accomplished the same thing. So, I, I think this uh, is, this process is very uh, very appropriate, good foresight to put this in, and I, I think it can have a lot of credibility for the council for future uses of the. And again, in my previous experience, none of that was there, and it was, it was not very well done in retrospect. Okay, and, uh, same question then that I had asked uh, the other applicant. You know, you're busy in your life. How in the world would you want to serve them? One more commission. Uh, I enjoy public service. Um, I enjoy community service. Uh, we live in this community. I want to see it better. We have challenging times, and uh, and I just believe that I know how to do this, and I believe I could add value to it. So that's why I volunteered. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. Thanks. Thank you very much, Steve.